Welcome to the SPSS demonstration video for Chapter 2, Working with Numbers and Data Display. I'm the author of your text, Richard Landers. In this video, we'll be exploring the analysis and uh, visualization of both qualitative and quantitative variables. And this encompasses both frequency tables and graphical representations of numbers. We'll start with frequency tables, and to do this, we'll be using the Chapter 2 FREQ dataset, uh, which is found on the course website. Here we are trying to construct a frequency table uh, involving, uh, based on this data on muffin sales. Uh, to do this, we will go to the Analyze menu. We will select Descriptive Statistics, and then we will select Frequencies. On the Frequencies table, we need to move this variable called muffin over to the right side of the uh, Frequencies dialog. Uh, to do that, simply click on it so that it's highlighted with this uh, orange kind of label and then either click, drag it over to the variable side or use the right arrow to transfer it to the right. After that, ensure that the check, a checkbox is selected for display frequency tables. If you try to turn it off, it will get mad at you right now, although that may not happen in the future, uh, depending on what analyses you're running. As long as you have these two things true, we have muffin in the variable list and display frequency tables checked. If we hit OK, we will see a frequency table. And this contains all the information that you will need uh, that we talk about in the text. We have the list of uh, items available. We have frequencies. This is F. We have percentages, which are our relative frequencies. And then we have cumulative percent, which are cumulative frequencies. If you want to express it as a relative or, or cumulative frequency, that means you need it as a proportion, which means you need to divide these by 100. So this is 0 0.33, 0 0.25, 0 0.08, and 0.33, and so on. So that's a frequency table. Uh, we'll now shift over to the other data set, which is our Chapter 2 case study data set. Uh, this data set is where we're going to be examining uh, data display. So here we have quite a lot of variables, uh, or quite a lot of cases, rather. We have uh, almost 1,400 or so, yeah, 1,334 cases, which is quite a large number. We need, to use, uh, we need to use data display and various techniques in order to better visualize what this data actually looks like. So we'll start with this store variable. You'll notice in the, if you go to the variable view, because remember this is where we specify uh, information about these variables, that our store variable actually has several settings already, the ones that are listed in the text. Numbers 1 through 10 are associated with the names, uh, the categories of those stores that are already existing. So this will be helpful information, and you'll see how this ties in in some of the output in a moment. So first of all, we want to conduct a frequency analysis. So we'll go ahead and move stores over, make sure that we have a check for display frequency tables. You can see now that we have a, a new frequency table. You can see that those labels that I pointed out earlier are appearing in the table. That's where they come from. They come from that value section. And we can see a variety of interesting information uh, associated with these. We see frequencies, we see relative frequencies, and we see cumulative frequencies. Next, we want to create a bar chart. To do that, go to the Graphs menu, Legacy Dialogues, and Bar. Choose uh, simple, just hit define. For our category axis, we're going to select store, and then we're going to hit OK at the bottom. This creates a bar chart for our, uh, for our store variable. The only thing that's really missing from this is going to be a title for this chart. Uh, if you want to view the title, if you want to add a title, you'll need to double click on the graphic to open up the chart editor. And from the chart editor, uh, you can select to add a title by using title in the options menu. Uh, that will allow you to specify options for a title and also to add a title. So once you have selected that, you can hit close, then you can see the word title has appeared, and you can double click on that and insert whatever title you want. In this case, bar chart of websites visited. Otherwise, SPSS automatically provides you meaningful uh, access labels and otherwise should be pretty much good to go. When we close that, it will save it back to the output view. If you need to copy this into something else, like uh, Word, for example, just right click on the chart in general and hit copy, and then you can paste that into another, into another location. 
So next, we are going to create a, bar, a pie chart. Process is the same. Graphics, legacy dialogues, and then choose pie. Again, just hit define. In the next panel, move store over to define slices by. At the bottom, hit the OK button. We see a pie chart appear. Quite a large pie chart in this case. You see, once again, the pie chart has taken on the values that we specified in the variable view. If we double-click on the pie chart, we can open up options for the pie chart in the, pie, in the chart editor. Here, we first need to add a title, so we can go to Options, Title, then hit Close. We can double-click on the title in order, to ed in order to edit it. Click once, click again. Pie chart of web website visited. So if you look at this chart, you'll recognize that this is not a lot of information. While it gives you kind of a visual sense of the relative, import, uh, the relative uh, number of visits, you can see, for example, electronics is the most, that's not a lot of detail. Uh, from a chart, we really want to be able to draw more substantive conclusions than that. So one of the things we can do is add data labels to this chart. If we go, uh, if we go and look in the Elements menu, you can see that there's a Show Data Labels entry, but it's grayed out. And the reason for that is because SPSS uses what we call context. Depending on what's currently highlighted in the, in the editor, that's what the option, the items up in the menus will affect. So in this case, we want to apply uh, data labels to the entire pie chart, so we need to click so that a little faint yellow line appears around the entire chart. So you can just barely see that. If we click again, it will cover a single slice, and then we'll only be affecting the slice. So we don't want that. So I'm going to click away. And then I'm going to click back to this whole chart, so we have just the entire chart selected. I'm going to go back to Elements, and now we see Show Data Labels. When I click Show Data Labels, you can see the percentages appear uh, within each label, which is much more helpful. Uh, you can now also choose to flip up some of these items to the top to add more information. So say, for example, we want to add the count. We can click on Count here, then click Up, and then click uh, Up to make it the top number that appears, and hit Apply. And now we see both the counts and the percentages on each slice of this pie. So that gives you a lot more useful information uh, than you would get just from the slices alone. We can say, for example, oh, 309 visits are electronics, and that is very substantially different than the 44 you got in the discount clothing website. Again, once we click the X to close the chart editor, uh, it will save it back to the output editor, and then from there we can right-click copy and put something else in. The next uh, analysis, uh, the next graph that we're going to produce, now we're going to switch gears a little bit from qualitative variables to quantitative variables, in which case we are interested in, uh, we're interested in, both, uh, scatter, uh, in, in both frequency polygons, which are uh, line graphs, as well as histograms. So to do that, we take legacy dialogues, go down to histogram. We can see the histogram window come up. Uh, from there, we're going to look at a histogram of the number of minutes spent. Uh, you could do this on purchases as well, of course. I'm going to move that to the right and hit OK. And now we have created a histogram. Now, this histogram has a, a great number of bars in it. Uh, perhaps that's not as many as are useful. So we can, again, here, double-click on the chart to open up the chart editor. And then we can click on the bars uh, once to get the yellow highlight. And then double-click again to bring up the properties dialog, and from within this, we can choose different sizes for the bins if we wish. Uh, so for, say, for example, I would like instead, uh, I would like instead just a nice eight no, intervals. I hit apply, and you can see immediately the graph changes to represent the eight bins uh, that I specified. If you also want to change the, uh, the labels at the bottom, uh, because these are, uh, these are not related directly to the bins. You can, see the, uh, you can see the labels at the bottom here. If you want to change those as well, then the same process applies. Click on those labels so that the Properties panel now displays that instead, and you can change, uh, you can change the labels in the Scale menu. So here you can say, it's, say now instead of having 10-point uh, increments, we want... Uh, five-point increments. We hit apply, we can see now that those increments have changed. So what I'd recommend then is playing around with this a little bit and just seeing how these numbers and how the presentation changes as you adjust those numbers. 
one of the uh, one of the most important, one of the best things that you can do while learning how to use new software is to simply experiment. So don't be afraid of just changing some settings and just seeing what happens. Next, we might be interested in creating a frequency polygon. Uh, to do that, it's a little bit weird in SPSS because SPSS doesn't actually have frequency polygons built in, which means there are no binning functions as you would see in a histogram. In a histogram, we can say, for example, I want eight bins, but we can't do that with a frequency polygon. You can, however, create a line graph by specifying graphs legacy dialogs line, uh, and then choosing a simple graph, and then choosing the uh, variable you're interested in for your category axis. However, the downside of it is, that, again, there's no way to bend, so you end up with a very uneven line. In general, it's going to be much more recommended if you're using SPSS to look at a histogram rather than to look at a line graph. Now, where it, SPSS is very strong is in the creation of scatter plots. If we go to legacy, uh, graphs legacy dialog scatter, uh, scatter slash dot, which you see at the bot toward the bottom, you can choose simple scatter, define, and then enter a simple scatter plot uh, by simply adding the variables wherever you wish them to be. In this case, we want the number of minutes to be on the x-axis, that's the horizontal axis, and purchases to be on the y-axis, which is the vertical axis. So we can just move each of those over in the same way we moved them over before, either by clicking and dragging or by clicking that arrow left and right. Afterward, we hit OK, and we have our scatter plot. Uh, so it doesn't look like much, uh, but it does give you a very a, a visual representation of the relationship to this data. It looks like a pretty strong uh, line, a pretty strong relationship between the two. So that's it, and we've now covered uh, free, we've covered frequency tables. We have covered the appropriate visualizations for qualitative data, uh, which include pie charts and bi pie charts and bar charts. And we've also examined visualizations for quantitative data, which include histograms and line charts, uh, which is the SPSS version of the frequency polygon. And we have finally looked at scatter plots. So you now have a wide range of tools available to visualize your data. And that is it for Chapter 2.